You guys, it's finally here! My very first magazine published design. It's in crochet, winter 2021's issue, which is now available basically everywhere. You can get it in stores, you can get it on their website, the digital version if you can't get your hands on a hard copy. And I am so incredibly excited about my first published design. I mean, I have independent published designs, but I've never been published in a print source like this before. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys my process from beginning to end. How did this happen? What was the process? So I'm going to take you through as much of it as I can. I know I was filming video throughout the creation of this design, so I should be able to throw in some like old videos from last winter when I was making this project back when I couldn't talk to you about it. So yeah, if you're interested of the behind the scenes, uh, then just keep on watching. So how I came about this opportunity in the first place was that an old coworker of mine actually got the position of editor of this magazine and she reached out to me and said hey I am now the editor for this magazine and I know that you design beautiful crochet patterns that are well written I think you would do very well submitting to this magazine why don't you get on the, the call list and submit what you can and we'll see if any of it fits so the very first call that came out was for fall 2021 and I submitted this plaid, well, what I had called a plaid poncho design. So here's what my submission form looked like. I had a rough, I had my swatch, I had my rough sketch of what I wanted the full finished item to look like and how it should be worn and draped and modeled. And then I kind of had some key points about why would they want to buy this pattern from me? How are they going to sell this pattern? So I kind of had these quick notes at the top here where it was like, you know, quick and easy, light and comfy. And a lot of those key words that I was using when I designed this whole thing came from what they were looking for. So that's my first tip. If you're looking to get published in a magazine, when you get those call for submissions, look at the key words of the things that they're looking for and design a project, a pattern that fits those key words. So that way when you could submit it, you can say, look, this is quick and easy. This is super warm. You know, it's exactly what you're looking for. And this is how you can sell this to your customers. So I made sure to do that in my submission form as well. And so when you do submit, you send what you think, you know, they want and then they'll get back to you. So after a couple of weeks, they said that they wanted to accept this project for the, they wanted to hold it over for the winter issue. So it didn't get accepted for fall but they asked to hold the design over for winter. And so that is how this project got put into the winter issue. Once I got confirmation, they told me what colors, what yarns and what colors to use. Originally, I had suggested the non-superwash Cascade yarns and they wanted me to make it out of the superwash and these beautiful colors. I think they did a great job picking out the colors for this project, but I have to say, I was nervous. I was so nervous to reach out for yarn support. This poncho, this Ruana, calls for so much yarn. Like, what? I'm pretty sure I have video back from when I realized that I needed to send this email. So here is the original swatch that I made for the design submission. It was Cascade Yarns Cascade 220 held double. And there's my little color chart that I made. Um, so the magazine requested that I get the yarn in these colors instead. And I do Cascade 220 Superwash. And so the yarn, the yarn is here. And look, it came with a little designer gift bag as well. Um, complimentary yarn samples from Cascade Yarns. Um, no obligation to design, but just kind of a selection of some of their offerings. Yeah, come. This yeah. is so exciting! Yeah, come. All right, it is the next morning, and I decided to get to work on this pattern. I started with the gauge. We had a snow day. You can see 
Jack, are you having fun out in the snow? Yeah. Yeah? Is school canceled today? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I went ahead and did all the math based on my initial swatch, which was using Cascade 220. And this project's going to be made in 220 Superwash. So I thought, uh, not that big of a difference. Well, 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 the gauge is different. It's a little bit finer than the non-Superwash counterpart. I am aware that Superwash tends to behave differently after it's been blocked. So what I have to do is slow down. I have to make another gauge swatch, wash it, and let it dry and measure it, and then do the math from there. How I figured out that my gauge was off was I actually started the right front panel and did a quick measurement and realized that this should be 30 inches it's only 22 and even if this grows with blocking it's not going to grow eight inches most likely so um, luckily i got an extra ball that they sent along from what i asked for so i can use this entire ball for swatching that's where i'm at this morning but i did want to show you i made the chart for the colors and i'm super excited um, to be able to visually put the colors together for this sample, which are so different from my original black, white, and red. Um, so that was pretty cool. Okay, so the swatch has dried and I measured it. And not only is it holier than I intended for the poncho, it ended up being nine stitches to the inch. So it's this gauge is not gonna work out. I did another smaller gauge with some leftover scraps of that extra ball and it is not as holy. It's still a little holy, but it's double crochet. So it's going to be a little holy. Um, I went down two millimeters to get this gauge. So it's a lot denser of a fabric, but it still has the drape that I need, which is great. I popped the numbers, the weight and the area of this swatch into my little spreadsheet here to estimate how much yarn I need to complete the poncho. Turns out I'm considerably short, so I've got to ask for more yarn. So it's time for a design update. I did reach back out to the company for more yarn and they, I think I got it next day. They quickly shipped the yarn. I was even able to get it in the same dye lots as the original yarn they shipped me. So I got a little worried and upset, but there was no need. So I've been working on the poncho now for two days and it's time for the two fronts to be joined with the and to start the back. So here are the two fronts. Hand for scale. They're massive. So based on my measurements this should be 50 inches wide, 30 inches long. All right, so here it is on me. This poncho is massive. It's a little heavy, but I think it's gonna be okay in the end. Um, you don't feel the weight when you wear it, you just feel the weight when you pick it up because it's heavier than most um, ponchos that you're gonna buy in the store, but that's because it's handmade. So I've gotta go back and do the surface crochet, the woven surface crochet and weave in a million ends. There are so many ends. I have opened 16 balls of yarn so far and I still, I think I have at least five or six more balls to go to finish up the um, woven surface crochet. So we'll see how this turns out in the end. So it's a couple days later. I just got out of the shower a little bit ago after working out. I gotta pick the kids up soon, but I'm gonna try to time myself doing this surface crochet to see how long each vertical stripe is going to take because the rows should all be the same so I'll, I'll be able to see exactly how much time i need to do this but let me show you what i did to the chart i needed to update my chart to include the vertical stripes and go out to 34 stitches i needed to know how far apart to do these stripes and i'm basing it off the corner of the poncho i didn't want the stripes to be right at the beginning, on right at the edge of the poncho. And now I also don't want them to be at the left edge of the poncho. I wanted them slightly off centered, um, but with a nice gap in between because what's gonna happen is you skip these, you place your vertical stripes, 
you skip those plus those in the middle. And so this should show you where the stripes lay in comparison to the beginning of the row and then in comparison to the end of the row. So we're not straight in the middle um, and harsh on the eyes. It's time to get surface crocheting and time to time myself. So I've been working on the poncho and I'm nearing the end and I want to undo some of it and frog it. Let me show you. Originally, I thought it would be a good idea to have the stripes offset on the neck area, but when I tried it on, it just looks wrong. It, I don't like it. And what's more important is that I put out something that I love and I don't love the split not being centered. I really don't think that I've ever designed a project that I didn't have to frog at some point. So I frogged all those vertical stripes. The yarn is reusable. This is why I don't weave in my ends as I go. And I remade my chart and I put the vertical lines right in the middle so it will be nice and symmetrical. I really thought that I was gonna like it not symmetrical, but I was wrong. So I just realized I forgot to check in and craziness is happening. Look at this. So I decided that I wanted to change the stripes, the vertical stripes. I don't want them to be so skinny. I want them to be a little bit more distributed and wider. And to make sure I was happy with that, I didn't crochet them all. I just crocheted them up to here. <laughs> so I've got all these balls from earlier that were frogged attached and just all over the place. And while it looks crazy, and I know this, and I've seen it, other people do it in pictures when they're working like color work charts, it looks crazy, but honestly it's organized and it's not that crazy. Or maybe I'm just telling myself that, I'm not sure. But I am happy with the wider stripes. So I'm gonna be going forward with that. And so I'm just gonna keep carrying these up little by little. In my original swatch, the yarn, the gauge was completely different. So I had I had to change it to get a look close to what I had before, which is why I wasn't happy with it. And I just hadn't realized that yet. So time to, I think this is the final time. We're centered, we're wide, we should be golden. I keep forgetting to check in. This is such a long and drawn out process. It's hard to remember to check in and let you guys know how it's going behind the design. I am now writing up the pattern. I've got my computer here and I am making sure that my pattern style matches with their pattern style. And luckily I just got the latest issue in the magazine, in the mail, because I uh, am a Crochet Guild of America member and you get a issue in print if you want. Um, I think it might cost more, I don't remember, than just the electronic version. But yes, so that's what I'm doing while my blanket blocks on my bed, check it out. The, I blocked the poncho and it dried and the woven surface crochet actually shrank it a little bit. It's supposed to be 60 inches long from front to back and it shrank to 52 inches. So I reached out to the editor and let her know what was going on and she said that is like just a little too short. Uh, it, can you stretch it? So then I pulled it out and pinned it down and was able to stretch it to 56 inches and in the meantime we've been I've been sending pictures to the editor to let her know what it looks like and how it's going and this morning I had to photograph David wearing it because he's six foot tall and the models can be anywhere from five six to five nine so we want to get an idea of what it looks like I'm only five two so the poncho is going to look nice and long on me but uh, we're concerned about how it looks in the magazine so um yeah, it's time to say goodbye to the plaid poncho. It's done. 
I have finalized writing the pattern and all I have left is to just double check that none of my woven in ends are sticking out, label it, fold it up, box it, put the printed pattern on top and then mail it and send the email with all the electronic files of everything and it's done. I can't, I can't believe it's done. I'm so excited about this poncho, you guys. It's, it's gorgeous and oh, I'm super excited. I'm super excited about the design. I'm super excited to get my first pattern published. I can't believe it's time to send it away and then I'll never see it again. <laughs> so I've laid the poncho out one last time and made sure no ends were poking out because I did have to stretch it a bit to make sure it met as close to measurements as possible. I did end up being a little short on my finished measurements, but that's okay. Um, I was able to stretch it to close to the amount. Uh, yeah, so I've got the pattern here following their template, as well as the chart, as well as a schematic. Overall, it was a super fun experience. I mailed it in, uh, the hard copy pattern with the digital pattern emailed with the sample that was all labeled. And a couple months later, once the pattern got into tech editing, there was some back and forth with my tech editor. And then that's what you see today. So it was so much fun. If you guys have never submitted to a magazine before, I highly recommend watching this great video by Ellen Gormley. I'll link it down below. It's what I watched to prepare my first submission. She is an old editor of this crochet magazine, so she was able to break down in that video tips for how to get your projects accepted, how to get your projects bought, what are they looking for, how do you make yourself stand out, and I think all of her tips work. I took her tips, put them into practice, and got published. And I'm happy to say this isn't the only one, right? I've got more coming out this year, and I cannot wait for you guys to see what's going to be coming out. So seriously, if you haven't subscribed to Crochet Magazine, you're going to want to, because I'm already planning to make one of the patterns that's going to be coming out in the next issue. So... I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the process or the about the Rwanda itself. Uh, yeah, let me know. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye. Bye.